Hello, my fellow adventurers. Welcome back to Living a Grand Adventure. My name is Kevin, and Alex is with me. And today we have taken a trip up uh, a little bit northeast of where we live, about two and a half hours, over to Mohican Memorial State Forest. And what we're doing, uh, we're going to hike in. First day is going to be about six miles. And we're going to stay at site six at the parking packs. Second day, we should have about another four to five mile hike. That actually will be over to site four. And then we're going to finish up this little loop that we've got right here. Uh, finish that up on uh, our third day. And for our third night, we actually will be heading over to site nine. We do have to drive over there. Otherwise, it'd be like a 20 mile hike. We're not really doing that that day. We're kind of just going to really camp that day and enjoy it uh at least the next two nights we are hammock camping something kind of we haven't done for over a year the last time we had well actually it was last september yeah that we actually was the last time we did an overnight at germantown but uh on the way up we did run into uh, quite a bit of rain and we actually ended up sitting in the car and having lunch uh, we had planned on trying to hike in a couple miles and having lunch in the forest but it was raining hard enough that we kind of figured well we're a little hungry we'll go ahead and get us some calorie intake and some water intake and then just hit the trail hard and heavy once it quits raining it's sprinkling off and on we do have of course the waterfall off the trees right now so we may get a little damp but the forest is pretty but definitely very wet right now now, fortunately, this should be about the only rain we may see while we're here. We do have a couple more chances of rain over the next uh, few hours, but after that, we should be good to go. Looks like it goes out into that field there. Kind of neat. But, yeah, and the uh, trail is kind of wet and slick in spots, so we're going to have to watch our footing. And we're definitely expecting a lot of mud walking because this is part of the bridle trail uh, where they have horses and stuff. We're hoping it's not going to be too difficult, but yeah, it's definitely wet. We both have our waterproof boots on today so we can make sure we keep our footing. Really good tread on those boots and such. And it looks like we're going to start one of our declines right here and head into the forest really nice. Cool thing is here at the Park and Packs for Mohican, sites five and six are the most remote. We wanted five, but somebody beat us to it, which, you know, you do run the risk of not getting the site you kind of wanted when you get here. But luckily we were still able to be able to do the loops and such that we're wanting. And site four and site nine for our second and third night were the ones we actually wanted to do. So, that actually did come out. I mean, it's a lot better than it could have been. I have been here a number of times. And most of the time I end up staying on site three because it's almost always open, which yes, it's open right now. But I want new sites. So we do are doing three new sites here at Mohican. Well, we're still heading along this path here. This is actually part of the mountain bike path or trail here at Mohican. And it's been kind of like that up and down for about that last mile. Uh, we've been on trail about 26 minutes and we're just over a mile. Got a little junction here, three-way junction. Well, actually, I believe that one goes up to that gas main there. This place has been littered with gas mains like that. It looks like that might actually leave out to pro property. I would believe we're going this way. That's what it shows. Yeah, but yeah, whole area has been littered with gas, gas lines and stuff. Been a number of them. This is the largest one we've seen. Most of them have been you know, about the size of the very first part of this. I'd assume it's that's just a main junction right through here. Oh, there's a cardinal. May have actually got that on film on camera. Yeah, we're just moving along now. Making pretty good time. And so far, 
we stayed out of the rain knock on wood it's kind of clouded back up again okay this is a pig launcher huh interesting pig launcher is part of a network of pipeline and storage facilities that move natural gas into and out of a storage field that underlies Mohica Memorial State Forest and surrounding areas in industry terms a pig is a device inserted into a pipeline to clean or inspect the inside of the pipe so that's what this would be guys kind of interesting to actually put signs up to tell you what it is now we're heading down a decline looks like we're actually getting back into the woods now and this is kind of what we've seen the smaller gas lines and such still wide open trail of course like i said this is actually part of the mountain bike path that uh i believe it's about 24 miles here at mohican it's kind of interesting and guys just so you know i do apologize about the audio that you may be receiving right now i do have the gopro set in rain mode just in case we do get rained on and uh I don't have any of the external parts that actually connect a microphone to it and I have the GoPro closed up in, in you know, waterproof settings so the audio may not be as good as normal. We'll rectify that once the threat of rain moves out. Woods are pretty quiet where it's rained. You don't hear a lot of birds and definitely don't hear bugs right now. Now as it dries off I'm sure that'll pick up been hearing cars off and on of course we're really technically right between two major arteries here in the forest uh, state route 97 is that direction that we're heading and we have i believe it's i'll have to look it up i'll put it on the screen what that road is back that direction but we've been hearing cars going up and down both those roads over the last mile mile or so we will gradually slowly move away from those as we head towards site but for now, just kind of enjoying it. I think it's coming off the trees. It is, because uh, I'm not getting hit. We go this way. Yeah, see the blue arrow there? So yeah, we're following the blue arrow. It shows it to be a horse trail, but it's also part of that mountain, mountain bike trail I like spoke of. Small incline here. Definitely keeping an eye out for that rain. We've got our rain jackets ready. Another gas main right here in this opening. Mohican is a very pretty area though, guys. If you ever get a chance to come out here, it's definitely worth it. I'm glad when we actually get over into a little bit more, a more of a forest setting than walking this gravel road, which is basically what it is. Just a mainly probably a service road for these gas lines, and they just kind of let horses come down it, and the mountain bikes and of course hikers. Get a little bit denser as far as the woods go if you remember my video from back in october i did a one night trip over here to mohican stayed at campsite three was supposed to say two nights but decided to just do the one because nothing else was open and i wanted to do two different sites and instead i just day hiked a section of mohican this trail that we're on now actually connects to that green trail they basically start at the exact same point and uh basically you come down a little trail and you hit a point where it breaks off left and right left is that green trail that i took and this is right the right side heading this direction out to the east and that's where we're going and this is wide open trail guys i mean it's it's amazing uh i, I didn't really expect it to be this open this would be great for cycling. I mean, it's wide open, not too many hills. I mean, you could really, really move right through this area. 
Uh, but I, I wasn't expecting it to be this wide open. You know, anywhere I've been in Mohican, the trail, I mean, I mean the trail's well established, kind of wide like this, you know, maybe sometimes. But you have a lot more cover. And I mean, we've got power lines running down through here, and there's another gas main coming up. But the forest is really pretty on the side over here. And if I'm right, this is kind of over in the area where we'll be camping. About another four miles that direction, at least four and a half miles. But yeah, I wasn't expecting it to be this wide open. And it's easy. I mean, I'm not even using my trekking poles right through here. It's just, we're just moving along and kind of got a nice little fast pace going for us right now, guys. Kind of dig that too, you know. I mean, we're not doing as many miles on this trip, but if we can do them fast, you still get that heart going and you still get all the good exercise that you're wanting. We thought about going and doing a different trail during this trip, but we ended up over here. We were going to go to Lake Vesuvius. Uh, we went there last August as well as a couple years, or well, basically be a couple years now uh, as part of our vacation. That was like the first time we'd all been backpacking. A couple more gas mains. But anyway, and you know, we went there last August and that's uh, when we went over there to camp, it was a Saturday we were going to do an overnight trip and Jenny was with us and uh, unfortunately we couldn't find a site. Pretty much the whole park was full. There was probably a hundred people camping up in there. But we had thought about going out there because the whole idea of what we were going to do was just find a, a well initially hike in to the beach area swim for like two three hours then hike on over and find a site and then the next day we were going to hike over to the other side of the lake and do some fishing and then set up camp for that night and then come home and i got to looking you know like i've always said before you take any trip do a little bit of research Make sure there's no trail closures or detours or bypasses on the trail so you know kind of what to expect when you head out there and i got to looking there was a main water break on that area leading up to some of the campgrounds and such and because of that their bathroom is closed and without the bathroom being open there at the beach uh, i guess by state law they can't have it open unfortunately we uh, weren't able to do that trip because the beach is closed. I mean, they were talking, if you got caught swimming there, what I say, 60 days in jail and $5,000 fine? Yep. So it's pretty high. And it's just not something <laughs> we wanted to risk, so. I think it's coming off the trees still. And when I saw that, we kind of got disappointed. But it is what it is. I understand because believe me if you didn't have that bathroom open and people were at that beach they'd probably destroy that beach so we figured we'd do something else and i got to looking this is kind of what i had planned on doing last october and we had to kind of change my plans then due to everybody being <laughs> up in here on a weekend in the fall to see the the trees and such before it got good and cold. And I uh, figured why not? Let's go do that plan, head out to Mohican and do us a two or three night trip out there and have some good fun. Actually back into the woods a little bit guys. Made a right. And now in the woods, it's all deciduous it looks like. I'm hoping we run into some pine forest that maybe we can camp in. Hopefully one of these sites we're planning on staying that's in the pine forest. Yeah, definitely into the woods now. Looking pretty good. Let's check our time, guys, and see how far we've been and how long it's taken us. That's one good thing about all trails. It tracks that really good. So we are at 43 minutes, 1.6 miles. Not our fastest time, but the beginning of the trail was really, really, really muddy. And we were kind of skating around that a little bit. But it's definitely kind of cleared up now and this is pretty easy walking right through here we should have a junction coming up here in a little bit where we will leave this trail 
and start heading more south towards the site. So we're about two and a third miles in at just about an hour. It's like an hour and two minutes. But I'll let you know that we actually did leave right up in there. That was uh, still part of that service road, really. Um, really rocky, a lot of gravel. But we're off of it now and actually starting to head into the woods on actual trail finally. So about two and a third miles, you come off that and you make a, a left into the woods, guys. And this is more along the lines of the type of trail we were wanting to see today. I uh, haven't seen any rain yet. We still have a chance till probably about six, seven o'clock this evening. Uh, maybe even a thunderstorm blowing in on us or a nice shower. We're hoping to get over here in enough time to get at least get our rain flies for our hammocks set up. That way, if it would start raining, we'll be undercover and be dry. And the trail, if you can tell, has actually starting to dry out a little bit. It's still a little muddy, but definitely not like it was when we first started out through here. Kind of soft, and we are coming up on a decline according to uh, the map. And we'll have to watch our footing going down a little bit so nobody slips, but yeah finally into the woods some and actually like i said a little bit of trail walking I do believe i hear the road we we do have to cross state route 97 as we're heading south towards the sites uh of course we're going to site six like i said site five is just south of it and we will walk past it at some point today because we have to go down to pine run which is just south of site five to get water to filter a little bit up Pine Run being the creek that kind of bisects the bridle trail and runs just south of Site Site 5, like I said. You've seen that on the channel before a number of times we've crossed it. And that's pretty cool. But making this slow descent, I do believe we have, once we cross the road, we'll start back up the other side. Got a couple up and downs and it'll be flat again for a ways. So I figure our time will start slowing down a little bit because we do have these declines and inclines, but that's okay. Like I said, tons of gas mains, guys. Here's another one. Our gas line, whatever we want to call this. Still doing some descent here. Ooh, this, I'm glad we're not coming up this. Ooh, this is kind of steep in spots, especially with the rocks. I saw a lot of this on uh, the green trail. Very similar to this right here. Ooh. <laughs> Was that you or me or both of us? So I thought. See, the ground is really kind of wet still right through here. You can tell there was runoff and with it being a little bit wetter, you have mud underneath these rocks and it's wanting to slide. So we're kind of taking our time coming down through here, guys. Just don't want to tweak an ankle or a knee or go down hard on our butts or something. Risk either injury or equipment failure, like maybe one of our backpacks could get, get broke or whatnot. So guys, we just come down. You know this, this incline up in here. And now we're kind of on the last stretch here. Probably got about a mile, maybe a mile and a half to sight. Didn't bring the camera out while we were up on that ridge up there because there was a lot of up and down. That's part of it, but it also came out a little shower on us. Nothing major. Uh, I got a little damp, but I think the trees kind of protected us for the most part. But that shower's kind of moved off and uh, now we're back into the woods this is actually part of hiking here this is no bikes no no horses so this is all hiking right through here guys ah that might be our first look at pine run not sure if this is pine run or not if it is i will let you know on the screen either way we do have a little bit of a creek here we may have to cross might work my way this way and avoid this mud uh, it's a little slick right here. But yeah, a little bit of a creek. Not much right through here. But it is flowing, so that would be decent water to filter. 
And we'll see where this trail leads once it crosses this creek. Because, yes, it looks like we're about to go across it. Avoided all that mud back that way. Yeah, it looks like, yes, here, here's the uh, trail. Oh, interesting. Doesn't look like it's too deep. Hit a couple of rocks. I should be able to get across this, no problem. Would you like to go first and not fall in this time? Hey, no promises. Ah, yay, Alex did it. That was actually pretty stable for most of the rocks. Yeah, they look kind of pretty decent for you. You might get your ankle or heel in a little bit, but not ankle, but heel. You might get that in a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I think I got the my left shoe, the ankle, just a touch, but that wasn't bad. Oh, Didn't get wet. Quiet. Rocky and incline, yay, that's what we like. Rocky and muddy on top of that. Still making very good time, guys. Right at about four, four and a half miles in about two hours. So, <laughs> not even sure if it's actually been two hours. We had a good stretch of flat up there when it was raining a little bit that we just kind of moved through really quick. Hear those cars over on 97. That's always a busy little area here in the forest. We'll be hearing cars the whole time we're here. We always do. Dang, it looks like it. Can I get a little bit of water? A little bit of water? Yeah. All right, go take a little water break here, guys. So we just came up pretty, pretty long incline that was very very rocky it actually was just right back there it was nasty it was pretty rocky but we did happen up into this we also spotted a deer yeah we just saw a deer less than five minutes ago well less than two minutes ago probably <laughs> yeah we just saw it it i heard it start rustling through the woods and it just pounced out over across the trail but yeah, this is this is really pretty, guys. Pine forest, completely. Yeah. And it goes for a ways too. It looks beautiful. We're uh, maybe six tenths of a mile to the site, so we're doing a really good time. I did come in another little sprinkle. We kind of got off trail just a touch. We. Uh, Got turned around, went up to one of the gas mains, had to turn around and get back on the trail. And then there was a reroute that it showed for the bridle trail. And the all trails route took us a different way. I'm pretty sure we should have taken that reroute because the stretch that we come up was really washed out, really eroded, and a lot of rocks. So I figured they rerouted it from what we had on all trails. And I just wanted to make sure we knew where we were going. So we kind of come up a very rough stretch of trail, very rocky, very steep. Like I said, washed out. So, but this is, this is nice. Now we're flat and walking through this pine forest here, really quiet. We can't, we kind of left state 90, state route 97 back a ways. Still occasionally hear lar larger trucks and cars and such but definitely not as much in the way of traffic sounds as we what we were hearing. So we should be coming up on our site very soon. It's gonna be really awesome. I can't wait to get over here and get these hammocks up. Alex is using the one that she's had for a while. She likes her setup. I went ahead and invested in a new, whole new setup and gonna try it out this trip. And I'm using the Dyneema string, which is lighter for my ridge lines and stuff. So we're gonna see how that plays out and see how much easier it may be versus saving weight. I do have a new hammock, new rain fly, a new removable bug net. I'll show you all that when we get to site, it's gonna be awesome. But we should be coming up on site probably in the next half mile or so. 
really excited to get over here and hopefully get set up before we get rained on again. So guys, we finally reached site. It's a pretty good little hike. It wasn't too awful bad actually and didn't see too much rain. Two hours, 51 minutes, 6.4 miles. It's a pretty good time, guys. I'm quite happy with that. Site six isn't too bad. Got a nice fire ring. Pretty decent bench sitting there. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to do a fire tonight. I mean, we could probably scrounge around and see if we can get some wood, but everything's really wet from the rain. So we might just skip that idea. Kind of just enjoy the night and rest and get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow's a much shorter hike. It should only be about four and a half miles. And maybe get over there early and do a big fire tomorrow night. We'll see, we'll see how it kind of plays out throughout the day. It is only four o'clock now, so we've got plenty of time. It doesn't get dark to 8.53, that's when the sun goes down. Of course, if the clouds don't come over, uh, clear up a little bit, it may get pretty dark uh, by 9.15. We do have to go out, back out over here's the main trail. We'll show you as we go. Go out this way, back to the main trail, and go down to Pine Run to filter water. That's probably another quarter mile, maybe even close to a half mile. We'll kind of calculate that as we go down and back up, because we do have to go get water and then bring it back. But we're gonna go ahead and set up site, and then we'll go down and do that. I really wish it was drier, because it would be a nice to have a fire here. Uh, forest is kind of deciduous with some pines mixed in really pretty area i'm sure it's gonna be really nice in the morning when the morning sun hits and everything is kind of dried off a little bit overnight starting to hear some birds come out in the distance so i'm thinking the, the, the rain has probably finally moved off for good we do still have a spot of a chance of thunderstorms about five o'clock this evening so we're hoping to be set up completely by then and personally, I'm hoping in the next hour to be set up, which that would be at five o'clock, and be down to Pine Run and back before we get hit with a rainstorm. So guys, we've got site set up. Still a little bit of a chance of rain, so I haven't put on the new mic, the mic yet. So yeah, it only took us about an hour to get set up, which is a little bit longer than normal, especially if we have our tent. But I think part of that is, as Alex was saying, go ahead. Yeah, uh, we, we're using a lot of new equipment and some of the stuff we are using we haven't used in a while if it is the same stuff because we haven't done a hammock setup since back in September when we did Germantown with some of our family and so it's almost been a year so a while <laughs> well what ten and a half months yeah and then of course you know uh, had a new rain fly with trying out some new uh, rigging for that as far as the ridge line and such um, my new hammock which we'll see how what, what i think about it it it's smaller than i thought it was going to be but i think it might still be comfortable and then uh of course the new my, my new bug net which we'll get we'll see how i think about that too uh got to sleep in it a couple of nights i'll let you know but yeah we're heading down here which will pass site five and then going down to pine run and get us some water for the night and Really, we're only gonna be filtering about 20 ounces while we're down there. Uh, we have a three liter bladder that we're gonna fill up and carry up with us. And then I have, I'm gonna go ahead and re just fill up the liter bladder for the Catadine because we're using the Be Free right now. Alex did bring her Sawyer just to be on the safe side if we needed it. Um, I cleaned the Catadine really good at home doing the shake and the swish method. And basically I, I, I have like a, um, two quart bowl that I dumped the water in just to see how clear it got it got pretty clear but the first couple of times I did it yeah it was pretty brown had a lot of sediment in it I was actually kind of shocked that uh, there was that much in there but I'm glad we were able to get it clean so I see this is one of the reasons we wanted to be kind of at site five because it's closer to water but th there may be a payoff we do have really good signal up at site six yeah, we're getting like three or four bars, or at least I am, and I'm pretty sure you're actually almost getting full bars, which... I've got like, I, it, it goes between three and five for myself, so... Yeah, I'm right so, about the same. So we're definitely able to contact family. Um, I've been texting Jenny uh, ever since we got the site. Um, probably end up talking to her a little bit later once she's off work. I did tell her as we went down here to get water, more than likely we'd probably lose signal, because we've been kind of losing it in the valleys somewhat. 
but we may not i don't know we're kind of keeping our eye out for site five as well because once we know we hit site five we got like very little distance to get on over to, Ca to not caddy run <laughs> that's archer's fork <laughs> to get over to pine run and get us some water for the night we still actually have three liters up there you know it wasn't too bad uh getting in and everything but i would like to have basically we're wanting to have enough water where we don't have to stop to filter tomorrow we can just filter everything up either tonight or tomorrow morning at site get our packs on and go now we will end up doing this stretch again tomorrow down because we go down cross pine run and then continue on the loop that we're doing to head over to site four for tomorrow night this is gonna be kind of steep coming up but we do not have packs so it won't be so bad the only drawback is we don't have our trekking poles either because we're actually using those with our hammocks <laughs> yeah we're kind of in the hammocks right now it's doing a little bit of raining so we just kind of scooted up underneath our rain flies and just kind of getting a little comfortable uh the sun's out but it's raining right now so we're just kind of going to stay dry may relax a little bit it's about, six, about 20 after six so not really too awful bad um it took us what about 25 minutes to go down and get water and come back it's about, it was a, probably a good half mile to three quarter mile hike. Well, because we've got to go that direction down to Pine Run and cross it to go out to our next site tomorrow. We'll um, get an actual estimate on the mileage there. We did pass site five. It's a pretty nice site. There's uh, a group there. They actually come up and uh, there's some mushrooms over here in the forest that they knew about and they wanted to come get, get some to cook with their dinner. And they came up and, you know, they had asked us as we passed them if they if they could come, come up and get the mushrooms. And I told them, yeah, come on, up and get, you, get you some. So they come up and got their mushrooms. I guess they're going to have that with their dinner and everything. So that's kind of neat. Um, they complimented us on our hammocks. That was kind of cool. They, they, have a, they have a nice tent. It looked like it was a marmot, I believe, or I think that's what it was. It was either an armament or REI. I, couldn't, I didn't want to get close enough to really, like, look, but that's what it kind of looked like to me, so... Nice tent, uh, yellow and white. But yeah, yeah, we got back to site, got our shoes kicked off, our feet's kind of, kind of feeling better. Uh, my feet were really starting to hurt. They had gotten damp from sweat. I'm I'm using a new pair of socks with uh, sock liners. I hate sock liners. I, I've got to find me a pair of socks that don't cause blisters, that I can hike in that don't ruin immediately. Because. Uh, sock liners just kill me. They 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 basically squish at my toes and make my toes hurt. Um, getting the shoes off though, my feet feel pretty good now. Uh, I need to clean my legs off before I kick my legs up into my hammock. That's why I haven't really actually crawled up in here yet because they are a hair bit muddy from the trail. The trail was muddy a good bit of the portion of the way. Actually, when we went to get water. Actually, I'll, I'll let Alex tell this story. So. When we went down to go filter water, obviously with how much it was raining, it was quite muddy. And during one of these areas of like basically the whole entire area was covered in mud and you had to cross a very small portion of the trail to actually be able to pass it, I stepped in an area that looked like it was completely solid. It was not. My foot sunk all the way down. I stepped my foot right back up and I caught myself on dad and step my foot back down again just as deep all the way up to my ankle and my foot actually got wet the second time um but my socks are actually dry again they dried on the walk back up after filtering or while well, getting stuff to filter so that was fun got to step in some quicksand there <laughs> yeah that was that was interesting she uh grabbed a hold of me and i wasn't expecting it so i almost slipped so but the woods are pretty nice and green but very wet we're, we've already made the determination especially after this shower come in that we're yeah we're not dealing with the idea of trying to do a fire tonight we're just gonna relax get us a little bit of dinner here in a little while we just kind of had a snack just now and after that we're just going to go on to bed and get an early start tomorrow to the day and get over to the site and work on getting some dry wood tomorrow for a big fire tomorrow night. Rain kind of seems to have moved out. The, the sky's kind of gotten blue. It, it's kind of nice actually to see. 
Uh, we're one day shy of a full moon. It was yesterday, so that's kind of neat. Uh, it comes up about, I think, 9.30 day, roughly. I think it's 9.27. We may not see much of it because... Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. We kind of, during that rain, came, that rain came in earlier, and we kind of both crawled in our hammocks, was just kind of laying there. And I dozed off for about a half an hour. And I, I did about the same. Yeah, probably about a half an hour, 45 minutes for the both of us. And, you know, it's just been kind of kind of comfortable. It's actually cooled off since the rain has stopped. Um, my watch said it's actually 67 degrees. So I'm figuring it's probably going to get kind of chilly tonight. We do have extra shirts to wear when we're sleeping, we have our sleeping bags. So we should stay comfortable, but it definitely is interesting that, you know, a week and a half ago, we were at Orchard's Fork and heat index was 100 degrees. It was 75, 80 degrees at night. And we're looking at probably in the mid fifties to low fifties tonight. So it may get chilly. Got our bear bag up. We're getting ready to fix dinner here in a few minutes. And after dinner, we're just going to kind of relax. Honestly, it probably gets dark, probably between 9.15 and 9.30. It probably won't be long after that. We'll be in the hammocks and probably not long after that asleep. Yeah. Uh, where we were up early today, did the two and a half hour drive here. Of course, it's two and a half hour drive here and then you have to go up to the kiosk and you have to do all that. And that, that actually takes anywhere from 15 minutes to a half an hour itself by the time you get back to where you need to park to you know start your hike. And then of course today it was raining when we first pulled in and we just didn't get started and we're near as early as we wanted. Yeah, I mean, it kind of worked out because if we'd have got here a little bit earlier, it probably would have been raining a little bit more than it was. So we actually caught that break in between rains to get set up. And then once it, you know, come in that last rain, I think we're going to be good the rest of the trip from what I can tell. I've got my Rather Band radio. It's a new one. The other one that we, we took last trip didn't work quite as well. So I bought one. It was about, I think, 12 bucks on uh, Amazon. I'm going to try it out. We'll see if it works. I'll let you know what I think about it. It does have AM, FM radio too, whereas the other one didn't have that. It's battery operated, triple, AAA batteries, two of them. But we're gonna give it a shot here in a few minutes to see what, it's, what it looks like. We actually can get signal on our phone, so it's not a pressing that we have this right now, but I figure if we can use it here and then we'll use it a couple times throughout the forest, you know, I'm hoping if we can get signal with it here, we should be able to get signal in other places pretty easily. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, we're gonna probably, honestly, I'm probably about to start my dinner here in a minute. Uh, I'm pretty hungry. Yeah, and, I, I'm probably about to do the same. And then after that, you know, we're just going to get the bear bag, bag up, kind of sit here and relax a few minutes once it starts getting pretty dark in the hammocks, guys. So I went ahead and purchased myself an alcohol stove. I've never really used one. And I figure I'd give it a shot here on trail and see what I think about it. I tried it a few times at home. It takes about eight minutes for it to boil, about uh, 10 to 12 ounces of water. It's definitely not as quick as the other type of uh, burner that we have. But, you know, I'm trying it out here on trail to see what I think about it. And I'll let you guys know as, I've, as I use it on trail the next uh, few days what I think and how I feel. It's got about that much water in there. And just to let you know, it is uh, Red Camp. Uh, it's basically a knockoff of the Trangia burner. Uh, I've seen people use the Trangia versus this one, and they're very, very comparable. The only thing is, I liked having the uh, the snuffer, and also this actually acts as, let me show you here, you can actually set the type of flame. So eventually I'm hoping maybe get a skillet, maybe do eggs and bacon on trail one time, just, just for fun and kind of enjoy it. And one little mo modification I did make, uh, this actually comes with a big stand. The big stand kind of sucked. It was really heavy and it was bulky. So I had these cross beams right here that actually were part of a wood burning stove that I really don't use much anymore. So I just used those with it and set that directly onto the flame so it kind of works. And this right here is a windshield. It's a titanium windshield that's really lightweight, just rolls up right around my pot. and that's my little setup for this trip. We're going to see how this goes. Worst case scenario, if this doesn't work really well, Alex does have her normal BRS type stove there. And you're doing... I'm making spaghetti. Um, make sure the 
remind me how much water I need for spaghetti. Spaghetti? Um, I would do about 12 ounces and then just cover it. And whatever you don't use, let it cool off, put back in your bottle. That's kind of what I did. Okay. And um, I'm going ahead and doing my ta tacos for tonight. I just kind of wanted to go, go ahead and get those done and eat those. I have spaghetti for tomorrow and then Thursday night if we do get to stay, which it's looking kind of like we might get to, uh, I'm doing uh, buffalo chicken tortillas. So that'd be kind of cool. So this has been boiling or going at it for about two minutes. It hasn't been long at all. It's got a nice little flame in there if you can tell. So like I said, I tested it at home, wanted to make sure it was going to work for me and it seems to. The woods are starting to start already get dark a little bit where it's cloudy out to the west some. It's okay though. Uh, we've got plenty of time before it really actually, the sun goes down. It's supposed to be like 8.53, I think is what I said. What I noticed uh, on the apps I have. But it's kind of neat. I mean, we're not directly in a pine forest, but there is some pine trees out this direction. And over in here is more deciduous. It, it, it's really weird. Uh, let me walk over here since I've got plenty of time for that to boil. Come over here on the trail. This is the trail leading up to the site. And this is our setup. I'm going to show you my new hammock and stuff tomorrow where I have a little bit more better lighting and won't have to worry about rain. Now notice this as we come back from uh, getting water. This is the trail. This goes down to the main trail. And I believe, I'm not sure where this goes. I would have to look it up, but this goes on out that direction. I've had, we, we actually saw the gentleman, the, actually the guy who come up here to get the mushrooms with the two girls, he came from this way. So there's obviously trails out that go out that direction as well. But if you notice, here's the trail right here. This side of the trail is deciduous. This side is majority evergreens. And I, I noticed that coming back. I was like, that is really weird. I mean, even down through here, more evergreens on this side, more deciduous on this side. And I don't know, I, I, I'm not sure what would cause that, but it's kind of neat. I mean, I, I thought that, you know, that the trail is just set up like that. So like I said, we're not directly in a pine forest camping tonight, but we are near one. I mean, and you, and you do get the occasional, like a breeze will come through and you'll get the smell of the pine forest, you know, the, the resiny pine smell. And it's kind of cool. But yeah, like I said, this is our setup tonight. We kind of, kind of close together. We did our triple tree setup that we've always used. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm on these, I'm on the, like I'm here on this tree and I come to this one here and Alex is also connected to that tree, but she goes over there. Not quite as close as like we were at Red River Gorge, but close enough that definitely, you know, if something goes down, we're close enough we can get to each other, no problem. And we like that setup, and it works really well. I did kind of raise this side a little bit just to give me a little bit more draft into my hammock because I, I get warm at night sometimes. But pretty nice night. Um, Alex is really beat. Her knee, for whatever reason, is hurting. I'm not sure why. Just one of those aches and pains you get on trail sometimes. So, yeah, bum knees. Is, is your family. is it going? Yeah, it is. Okay, so you just got it really low. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm just kind of chilling. I didn't want it too loud because it could affect the audio and stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's actually starting to steam already, so that's cool. Now, what's cool about this particular? Uh, let me raise that back up. If you notice, there's a little notch right here where it, that will stand up. So you don't have to, it doesn't get hot that way so you don't burn yourself. But what's kind of cool about this particular alcohol stove is it does have a cap with an O-ring in there. And you can cap off whatever extra alcohol you don't use. And it holds about two and a half to three ounces of fuel. I haven't measured it out. I mean, literally I just got this like three days ago and i was kind of in a rush just to get it out here and try it out so once i get the specs on it, i'll do a full review after i've used it a few times see what i think about it i do have a uh, little bit extra fuel off I, I think i have about two and a half two ounces give or take in there is what i brought in with me and then if you notice this little mio right over there i actually have that full of alcohol as well like i said we're going to try this out 
and I'm still, of course, using my uh, 650 Tokes, uh, 650 milliliter Tokes titanium stove or pot here. Alex is already done, and she actually had the exact same amount of water. So that tells you the, the difference in um, what, how long they boil and such. Now, now, if you notice, and of course she did start after me, but if you also notice, mine is almost at a boil. But it's a lot quieter. And I think that's one thing that'd be kind of cool. I don't mind it so much during the summer, but when, you know, in winter, when you're at site, and most of the time, yeah, you're going to have dinner after dark because you're not going to eat dinner at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon and it gets dark at 4 35 o'clock. It'd be kind of neat to have a quieter stove. But also, once again, you have to watch the temperature because these, from what, from what I've read and heard, these stoves don't work the greatest in cold temperature. Oh, and it looks like. It's, it's steaming, so I may have a, yeah, we've got a boil. So let me go ahead, get that off of there, and I'll show you what's kind of neat. Get the wind's coming out of the way, and hang on one second, I've got to find my little rag out there. I know where it's at, it's in my pocket, because of course these little titanium cross beams are going to be very hot, so I'm going to grab them, Ooh. toss them on the ground, why not? <laughs> But you have this little snuffer. Oof, it's out. And there's still that much fuel in there. But yeah, you know, this is kind of a, just a first look here at this stove. And you know, it's really the first time I've tested it on, on trail. So I'm gonna get my water while it's still hot and get it down into my uh, tacos and get those rehydrating. It's about 9.45 guys. Sun's been down almost an hour. Didn't really start getting really good and dark until about 15 20 minutes ago but it is full-on dark but we do see stars uh, i'm looking at one right now it's really awesome that we you know, were able to see some stars through the pines well not so much the pines but the actual deciduous here the pines are over that way but anyway it's kind of neat to be able to see the stars through the trees and uh we do know the moon will be coming up uh out to the east uh momentarily I believe it comes up in about 15 minutes well, actually about 10 minutes now and uh, once it kind of gets up into the sky a little bit, probably give it another 30 minutes past that, the sky will kind of brighten up, I'm sure. We're kind of looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to be up a little while. We, we, we kind of kind of just sit here and relaxed and start feeling a little bit better. Uh, we're tired, but we don't have uh, you know a big push on miles tomorrow, so we're just going to kind of relax and enjoy the night. Um, Alex is watching one of the episodes she downloaded on her phone right now. I've actually been sitting over. I watched the last one with her, but she started a new one right now. And of course, it's Criminal Minds. It's a show that pretty much the entire family watches. So I could jump into the middle of the show and be like, hey, I remember this one. Um, yeah, I'm a big sci-fi buff, but I do like, you know, some of the procedural, uh, what, what would you call them, I guess, uh, justice type ideas or whatever. Criminal Minds, uh, NCIS, uh, CSI back in the day, you know, things like that. Lo love CSI Miami. Uh, I used to watch that with my grandmother before she passed away. Those are really awesome shows, you know. But when I'm by myself, I do pick sci-fi. <laughs> sci-fi and fantasy. Definitely The Witcher on Netflix. <laughs> Things like that. Um, the Expanse. Awesome show as well. Star Trek. Star Trek. Well, yeah, I've been a Star Trek fan for years. Stargate. Really big Stargate fan, too. He's gotten me into those. Yeah. <laughs> I, he recently just showed them to me a little bit ago, and that's something that I, I'm a pretty big sci-fi fan, sci-fi and fantasy as well. And those are two shows that I actually really enjoy, so I'm glad that we can share that. You know, that's just kind of a little peek into our minds and what we do. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's been a great night. I mean, after that rain kind of exited and uh, it cleared off, uh, it's gotten cool. Oh, you can actually see my breath a little bit. Uh, let's see what the actually my watch is right here with the temperature it's showing wow um, it is 59 degrees right now guys so we are probably looking at a very cool night 59 degrees it does it, it switches between Celsius and Fahrenheit I had to remember which button it was because I really don't use that like I said I have a Fitbit on my arm now that my wife gave me and that tracks you know the fitness and stuff but I, I like having this watch just for the thermometer if I could get something that would combine the two it would be really awesome 
that would still connect to my phone and be really reliable. That's that's kind of the goal eventually. I know a Gorman would do that, but you know that's a four hundred dollar watch. <laughs> Maybe down the road, guys. But um, yeah, uh, great night. It is going to get cool tonight. Like I said, I mean it's nine thirty and well nine forty five. And it's already 59 degrees, so I'm figuring we may see as low as 50. But our setups, both of our setups, our under quilts are rated to 40. And of course we have a, a lightweight sleeping bag in there. We both have long sleeve shirts that we can sleep in if we really kind of feel chilly. I think we'll be okay. I'm not really stressed. Uh, it's actually supposed to be cooler the next two nights than tonight. So we may actually see temperatures cooler tonight than tonight, and we may get a little bit chilly probably watch this episode of uh, criminal minds take our melatonin because <laughs> we do take melatonin occasionally on the trail if we're really sore just to kind of loosen the muscles and it does help you rest really it helps you get to sleep and then you rest through the night pretty good when you're tired it was it was a blessing at archer's fork uh, it was the first time i'd ever take it. well no, i took melatonin the one night at east fort just to try it and yeah it works really well it kind of loosens the muscles and then you just kind of get to sleep and you know, it's just a natural supplement. Your body already produces melatonin, so doubling up on that, it's not going to, it's not like taking a sleep aid or taking a Benadryl or something like that. Melatonin is pretty, pretty decent. Um, I mean, it's even been prescribed to my kids when they were younger if they weren't sleeping, so I'm digging these woods. I mean, it's really quiet. We did hear the group down here at Site 5, what, about 830? Yeah, around there. And there is a dog. I, I'd say somebody, because the one through four parking packs are out this direction and we've heard somebody's dog barking a few different times they're quiet now but it, it sounds like a dog about the size of um what would you say maybe now nah, i mean I, I mean a little bit bigger than a pomeranian more like a maybe a, a, a she australian shepherd that range that size maybe even a little bit smaller go ahead and check out my instagram and my facebook right there it's really good to check that out. We have plenty of plenty of uh, pictures and videos occasionally put up on those and information about what we're doing, where we're going, things of the future. And we, we are actually going to start um, kind of putting up polls or stuff like that, you know, questions. Hey, you guys, you know, is, is there anywhere you would suggest for us to go? And we're going to put that out there for you guys to kind of reply to. And if we get some replies, maybe we'll look into those trails and see if it's logistically possible you know, for us to bounce out to those trails and hit some of those here in the area or even a little bit further away. Um, I know I'm, I'm kind of wanting to uh, get out of Ohio for a couple of trips coming up and we're going to see how that goes. Really depends on the state of the situation right now, but we're going to try to get out and go. Yeah, we have an eye on a trail out in Pennsylvania and there's one in West Virginia that we're looking at. We'll see how it goes. We're hoping to do those uh maybe may even be this fall yeah it's bedtime here uh we're getting ready lay, we're laying down now alex hello you can't really see me but hi anyway alex is already in her uh hammock and uh i'm kind of just sitting in mine kind of stretching my feet for a few minutes and then i'm going to actually lay down as well end of day one has really really been good other than the rain we've really enjoyed ourselves here uh site six is awesome I uh, wish we could have got a fire tonight, but, you know, no big deal. We'll see you in the morning. We'll hit trail and head over to Site 4. I believe it's going to be about 4.2, 4.5, somewhere in that range uh, mileage. Should be able to really enjoy that hike and uh, enjoy being over there. So we'll check that out. Anyway, guys, if you've liked this video, remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment. As always, it definitely helps the channel out. We'll be able to uh, do a little bit more the more you guys subscribe. Anyway, guys, always remember to live your grand adventure the fullest. We'll see you on the trail in the morning, guys. Take care.